What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I had an overwhelming response of you guys wanting to see the attack video. Told you if you want to see it, Bruce Wayne and myself will do a video on it. In the video, I just want to give a quick breakdown. There's not a ton of footage on it. I want to go over, in my opinion, what I feel my wife did wrong and what I would have done in this same situation. But we can't do the video without Big Dude. Being on a t-shirt's not enough. He needs to be like right here next to me. You know where he's at, guys. He's sleeping. He's sleeping in uh, my wife's uh, office over there. Yo, Big Dubs, they've been wanting to uh, see this footage and I can't release it without you here. Bruce Wayne. Go. Can you show? Can we show him that footage? Hey, bud. Hey, sweetie. Oh, you're just gonna push me, and you're gonna hug me, huh? You're just gonna give me a hug. Oh, I love you too. We all love you. The whole internet. Look at the whole world loves Bruce Wayne. This is how I'm gonna do the video, and I think if I did the video like this, he'd be totally happy. Remember when you got attacked? We were we were just trying to get you an ice cream cone. Your day was ruined that day. I am sorry, bro. I am sorry. Let me set the stage for you. Actually, let me just get him situated. To do a little bit of rearranging so we could fit everybody in frame here. Let me set the scene for you guys. It was a hot summer night. My wife just got home from work. And we're actually going to a location to film for her. As you know, we have multiple channels, Karakori Fit Life, and we're gonna film and get some photos for a clothing company that she works with, Buff Bunny Collection and we brought Bruce Wayne along. I figured, hey, maybe this will be fun, give you guys something different. We'll do a little vlog as we're doing this. I'll get a little bit of footage and we'll take Mr. Bruce Wayne to get an ice cream cone. This big as innocent dude just wanted to get an ice cream cone. We filmed, we got pictures, and then we decided to walk to the ice cream shop. And this is where things went wrong, guys. This is where things went, do you remember that? That was not cool. So as we're shooting the video, my wife requested something from us. Actually, she requested something from you guys. She requested you subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, ring my dingling so you don't miss any of the newest videos on Kane Corsos or Bruce Wayne. I figured it'd be fun just to bring him to get an ice cream cone, like I said, to maybe give you guys a different kind of video that you would enjoy. So actually, if you guys could just do me a favor and just take a moment and let me know down below in the comments, would you enjoy like random videos like that? Not necessarily educational ones like this. Kind of like day in the life. I can't do full days in the life all the time. Um, so those are stuck to the weekends for sure. And then his routine is so similar. It just wouldn't make sense to put one out every single week. But would you like videos like taking my kind of course to get an ice cream cone? You know, things like that. Just let me know down below because Bruce Wayne and I truly try to listen to you guys and bring you guys the content that you're looking for. I can't believe how fast the channel's grown, guys. I set a goal of 100,000 subscribers by August 20th and we're over 60,000 subscribers. If we do hit that 100K by August 20th, I am gonna do a video on who bred Bruce Wayne. So if you wanna see that, make sure to do all the things and share this video and get all your friends to subscribe to watch Mr. Beautiful Bruce Wayne. So as I said, we finished filming and getting pictures and then we decided to walk to the local ice cream shop because they have doggy ice cream. And as you guys know, when we walk Bruce, he always has a prong collar on him. And I say that because it's very pertinent to this video and what went wrong. Here's the innocent body bystander in all this. You're so well behaved. So I'm filming my wife. My wife is crossing the street with Bruce Wayne. We approach the ice cream shop and that's when a dog rushes at Bruce and attacks him. They ruined your day, huh? You were having such a good day and they ruined it. Now, this isn't the first time it's happened, and I doubt it's gonna be the last time. Things happen, but there are things that you can do to kind of minimalize it, and unfortunately, there's no perfect answer in situations like this, guys. But hey, we could probably take something away from this video and learn from it. And remember, I'm not a dog trainer, guys, so this is strictly from an owner perspective, on my opinion. Actually, Will from Fenrir Canine Show is doing a video. I sent him the footage, and I said, hey, can you give me your expert, because he's an expert dog behavioralist, can you give me your expert opinion on this entire situation? Break it down for me. I'd love to see a video response on it. So he's actually doing a video. I haven't seen it yet. He hasn't filmed his yet. And we're basically gonna upload them at the same time. So after you finish watching this video, make sure you go over there, tell Will I sent you, 
Subscribe to him, show him all the love. He's a great dude and the world's best canine behavioralist, guys. When I walk Bruce Wayne, I'm always highly, highly aware of my surrounding. I notice other dogs, I notice other people. I really pay attention to his body posture. If there's other dogs, I pay attention to their body posture because I don't want something to happen. Now, I was not paying attention. I was filming my wife walking Bruce. It is her duty to fully pay attention to her surroundings, understand what's going on around her, and be aware of a situation that may happen. That way you can diffuse the situation before it even happens. So as we approach the ice cream shop, we're crossing the street, and as you see, Bruce's demeanor is a neutral state. Tail isn't down, his tail isn't up. It's at a neutral state. He's walking just fine, he's not pulling. And as we approach, you can see the other dog and Bruce lock eyes. Bruce's tail starts to go up, his hair starts to stand. Now luckily, the other dog has a muzzle on. Now, I didn't notice that when it was happening because it was just so fast. So the dog runs up on Bruce, and you can see Bruce go to defend himself. He opens his mouth up to bite or grab onto the dog. And this is where, again, he's got a prong collar on. My wife yanks him away from this situation because she was caught off guard, and it was just her instinct to try to stop Bruce from biting this dog. But now, she leaves Bruce and herself in a state of danger where they can't defend themselves. No longer Bruce can defend himself because he's getting pulled backwards. So if this other dog didn't have a muzzle on and is biting Bruce, Bruce cannot defend himself. My wife pulls Bruce around her back. If this dog was, was extremely mean towards people, now she is vulnerable to getting bit by this dog. This dog obviously isn't nice. It has a muzzle on for a reason. He was unintentionally corrected, thinking he did something wrong when he did absolutely nothing wrong. If you watch my um, prong collar video, there's no gray area. So a prong collar's on and there's no pressure on it. He's doing good. As soon as you give a correction or put pressure on it, you're doing bad, that's wrong. Black and white, there's no gray area. So she corrected him with the leash, with the collar, not on purpose, it was strictly to get the dog away from the other dog, but she corrected him, leaving him to be confused that he did something wrong. When she pulled him back, it didn't hurt him at all. You do not do a correction like that with a prong collar. Ultimately, this could have turned out much worse. The dog may not have had a muzzle on, biting Bruce or my wife. Bruce could have latched onto the dog, severely hurting them or killing them. I mean, do you want a head this big biting down on you? You guys see it when he yawns. When, his, when he yawns, his mouth is bigger than my face. His mouth opens up bigger than my head. Obviously, I don't want that to happen to another dog. It's not the dog's fault he ran up on us at all. It's the owner's fault. And if you notice also, the dog starts running when the owner comes up and runs into the street, but the owner quickly stepped on the leash, stopping him from running into busy traffic. So another thing that could have went wrong is the dog could have got hit by a car. Or my wife could have stepped off the curb backwards to avoid the situation and got hit by a car. It was a horrible situation, but ended up just fine, luckily for all parties involved. Now, as you guys know, Bruce has been highly socialized. We have spent so much time training him. He's at doggy daycare once a week. Scuffles happen there. It's not his first rodeo and it's not gonna be his last. He's never the aggressor. I've been told that dogs that tried dominating him, he's put them down, but he hasn't broken skin. He's just like grabbed onto their face and put them into the ground. I really attribute that to all the work we've done with him, all the socialization we've done with him. Him not making decisions for us because we're proper leaders, we're making decisions for him. We're vice versa, the dog that came after Bruce was making decisions for the owner. And this is where all the training and all the socialization we did with Bruce possibly save this other dog's life. Have fun trying to control 150 plus pound Connie Corso that's angry and going after something. If you guys need help with training, check out the links in the description. There's courses down there, you guys, and they are amazing. They use the same philosophies and principles of how I train Bruce Wayne. There's a puppy course for all you new puppy owners out there because a lot of things aren't just one sentence fixes. It's how you approach a situation, how you handle the dog, how you interact with the dog, how you teach the dog. And I can't tell you that over a, a direct message. So check out those courses. There's a canine boot camp course, and that's gonna teach you how to be the perfect leader to your dog. So you have a Bruce Wayne on your hands. There's a raw course. And then there's the ultimate breed Kane Corso bundle, which is all three of those courses, plus one specifically on Kane Corsos, because guess what? They are a very different breed and they do have a lot of quirks. So you're probably wondering what I would have done in this situation. Sorry guys, but you're probably not gonna like my answer here. I would have most likely noticed as we approached 
all the other dogs and I would have noticed him and the other dog locking eyes. So a few things would have happened. I would have either, if I felt it was gonna escalate, I would have just walked the other way with the dog. If I didn't think it was gonna escalate and I kept approaching, I would have most likely seen the dog running at Bruce and I would have kicked the dog. And you may think I'm a horrible person for saying that, but kicking the dog would be much better than this face latching on to that dog. His head is about half the size of that dog. He would have done immense damage with a hard bite to this dog. That's right, bro, you're big. You're big and strong. But you don't need to posture up like everyone because you're confident. See, that's the thing, he's confident. The other dog was not confident. Or I would have let Bruce do his thing. I would have let Bruce grab the dog, and if they ended up getting into a scuffle, I would have had the other owner take his dog's back legs as I took Bruce's back legs we would have pulled them apart at the same time. If you're trying to break up a dog fight, never put your hands by the dog's mouth. You're gonna accidentally get bit or you're gonna lose a finger. Yes, I've heard of people and seen it on YouTube, people losing fingers trying to break up their dog in a dog fight. And it was their own dog that bit off their finger. I see the guy after he grabbed his dog and he picks it up by the muzzle and starts yelling at it. I'm like, dude, what the F? I'm gonna censor myself here. I'm like, don't do that to your dog. You're gonna make the situation worse. It's not his fault. The reason he's doing that is, and then he interrupted me, and he's like, I know, I'm sorry. It's because I didn't, it's my lack of training. I was like blown away that he actually even recognized that. Let me know how you would react in the situation. And be honest with yourself. Don't just be like, oh, I would have done this, this, and this. Really think about it. How would you have reacted? Would you have noticed the eye contact that the two dogs made. Would you have just had a knee jerk reaction and just quickly pulled the dog away? Would you have handled it like I said I most likely would have handled it? Or would you have a whole different approach? In the end, we can learn something from this small clip. Always pay attention to your surroundings, guys. Even if you're not walking your dog, pay attention to your surroundings. But when you're walking your Cane Corso, make sure you're paying attention to their body language at all times. Make sure that you're paying attention to see if there's any other dogs in the area. If there are other dogs in the area, how are the dogs looking at your dog? What's their body language? Does it look like they're gonna run up on you? Are they on a leash? All of these you need to be taking mental calculations and notes of so you can properly react to the situation. Do not trust other dog owners. That's why I never bring him to dog parks. There's far too many uneducated dog owners that have no clue how to raise or train a dog. So I don't wanna put Bruce Wayne in a situation where there's an aggressive dog and they get in a fight and he gets bit or he bites another dog. It's just not a good situation. Apparently he wants to be the center of attention. We'll let him have it. You can just look at him and just listen to my voice. There you go, buddy. You can sit on me. Number three, expect the unexpected. You never know what's gonna happen. Things can change in an instant. You need to mentally be trained and prepared for a situation that just randomly comes up at a split second notice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget on the way out to do all the things. Subscribe, like, ring the ding -lings. Head over to Will's channel, Fender Canine Show, and check out his reaction to this situation. And until next time, peace.